Let us pray. O Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. This morning, amen. As a pastor, I have numerous crosses. Necklaces, earrings, pictures, wall hangings. Some are bejeweled and some not. The first gift I received from my husband after ordination was a very large, ornate cross to wear when I preached on Sunday mornings. That cross and the collar that I was asked to wear were to be symbols of authority, which was really good because I was 25. So I was young, inexperienced, and really wet behind the ears. Well, I guess for many throughout my history as a pastor, it was the gift to give. Makes sense. Yet before the cross became equated with salvation and a symbol for a religion, it denoted something that has become overlooked often in our theology. It marked a moment when the paths of life were not fixed. When the direction of how to be in the world was less than certain and when God seemed to be rerouting the future. In our need for systemizing theology, I believe we have forgotten how wonderfully unstable the cross first was. Before the cross was something in which to believe, it was a moment in time, a moment in the life of those first disciples when they learned how to believe. Remember, when Jesus talks about the cross in today's scripture, it's here and now, not after the fact. And the conversation with his disciples, well, it is not an instant where he demonstrates his omniscient foretelling of his crucifixion. It's not terribly convincing to me or even meaningful to insist that this is Jesus at his prophetic or proof texting best. I'm also not swayed that Jesus is simply making sure that the disciples know what kind of life they're getting themselves into as if a pithy slogan might encapsulate the counter-cultural resistance that Jesus was and the existence that would be culture, counter-cultural that he was calling the disciples to. Well in this exchange between Peter and Jesus it follows Jesus's question of who do you say that I am? Caesarea Philippi is a critical moment for the disciples, for Peter and for discipleship in general because this is the moment in Matthew's gospel where Jesus begins to turn his face toward Jerusalem and ultimately to his death. So before the cross was the symbol that it came to be, it was a reminder of this very tenuous moment in Jesus' ministry. It was a moment like when you catch a glimpse of what life will be like after calling yourself a Christian and what that really means and makes you hesitate. The moment when you are told that the life that you thought you wanted, planned for, prayed for, was not the life that God had in mind for you. The moment when you might have to choose whether or not you are willing to have something else or someone else have more control over your life than you do too easily and too quickly. 
we jump to post Golgotha and Easter reducing the cross to something that we can wear around our neck or hang on our wall especially when the church gets nervous about its future. The cross is then reduced to an ornament, losing the dynamic essence that it was a symbol of condemnation. The cross was an instrument of death intended for public execution of revolutionaries and those touting a counter-cultural worldview. It was not a symbol of beauty or salvation when Jesus speaks of it. We need to recapture the meaning of the cross not as a symbol of our identity as Christians but as a reminder of that moment in time when our identity as Christians was called into question perhaps at stake or even in jeopardy and I believe that that time and that place is now. We're in a time and a place when we wear a cross not just to show the world who we are but to remind ourselves of who the world needs us to be. Before the cross signified salvation it was an instrument of condemnation. It was a sign of what happens when power is crossed and when we choose to embody a different expression of power it means the willingness to stand against power that would silence and oppress the insistence on speaking up for those who the world would crucify the courage to call a thing what it is it means the resolution to renounce those systems and institutions and leaders who choose themselves over others, who eschew community for the sake of their own betterment, who laud their crosses as a mark of their own works and not as being a blessing to others. Networks, nuns on the bus, have driven thousands of miles across the United States to prophetically speak out for justice and advocate for adequate federal policies. Well during these journeys the nuns on the bus encountered thousands of activists as they called for the creation of the common good. The nuns on the bus movement is an example of speaking truth to power and bearing the cross that results from that act of resistance. In 2012, that's pre-Pope Francis, the Vatican reprimanded this largest group of Catholic nuns in the United States saying that they had focused too heavily on issues of social justice while failing to speak out enough on issues that were crucial to the faith such as abortion and same-sex marriage. Well in a report that was issued from the American bishops in 2012 church leaders accused these nuns of promoting radical feminist issues and challenging key teachings on homosexuality and male-only priesthood. An archbishop and two bishops, all of them male, were appointed to oversee the nuns. To me, it's quite puzzling that our work with the poor, which Jesus told us to do in the gospel, would be the source of such criticism, says Sister Simone Campbell, who is the head of this Catholic social justice group, which was harshly criticized in the report. The rebuke comes as the so-called war on women had become a key issue in the White House. And these Catholic nuns had opposed the bishops by supporting health care reform law that included a contraceptive mandate. 
Well, Campbell says she believes that the Vatican targeted her group because of their support of health care for all, their lobbying work for those oppressed by public policy, and their work for immigrant rights. As Campbell says, they like it when we just do service, but don't have ideas, don't have questions, don't have criticism. The majority of the nuns on the bus have been excommunicated by the Catholic hierarchy. The cost of bearing the cross by putting their faith into action. The cross is a symbol of the certainty that release of the captives is a past, present, and future reality and that that future depends on our choice to carry the cross of Jesus. The cross of resistance, not the safe crosses of our own making. So carrying our cross is a choice. And ironically, it is a choice for life and not death. It is a choice to live counter to our culture, to live in resistance to all and any that are death dealing, dealers in our world. But here's the challenge. We tend towards saying the cross is a choice for life because it leads to resurrection. Yes and no. Yes, this is what God has done. Undone death for the sake of life forever, but no if that reality has no bearing on our present. Just because we are privy to the post-resurrection perspective of the cross does not mean we should strip it of its original meaning of radical resistance. During this time and in this place, we need to reclaim the counter-cultural cross of our faith. Amen.